aircraft would never be able to land A320 from this kind of approach. Hello ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking from flight deck. My name is Captain Surinder Singh. Welcome aboard the plane talking. Sit back, relax and enjoy your journey. So not cis nautical mile per hour radian theory theta s r theta is equal to s by r into 60 so you want to find s theta is 3 degree r is 100 knots divided by 60 which is knots is what your answer will be in knots <coughs> you don't want in nautical mile so you want to convert it into feet so that's what it is so so many feet per hour correct is so many feet per hour so minutes ke liye what you have to do you have for to convert into minutes you have to divide by 60 it comes 506.6 roughly 507 feet per minute so you can solve like this so in aviation book it comes as a formula and the formula comes that rate of descent in feet per minute is equal to theta into ground speed into 100 divided by 60 in all the aviation books you will see this as formula i forget formulas my problem is that i can't remember that's why i try to derive every formula once you have done two three times for all your life you are set so 3 is theta this 100 knots is your ground speed divided by 60 divided by 60 so from here this 100 comes in this formula again no book will explain you it is 6080 divided by 60 and that's what it is given in the books as formula so you have seen one application to calculate what is the height or what is the rate of descent if you know rate of descent you can calculate ground speed also theta is equal to s by r into 60 so any angle can be given in three manners that is in degree radians and gradients degree normally what we use we already seen when we converted in the radian theory that one radian is 57.3 degree radian practically we don't use it there is another term which is called gradient so we saw when you are landing you land on 3 degree glide slope that angle is given in theta if this is 10 nautical mile we calculated this height theta is equal to this is s this is r theta is equal to s by r into 60 so this s will be 3 into r is 10 nautical mile divided by 60 yesterday we did this and you multiply by 60 80 feet the height comes to 30 40 feet relationship between distance and height and we came up with also with the conclusion 1 nautical mile is corresponds to 300 feet if you are coming on 3 degree glide slope i'll show you very interesting thing anyone knows that uh, karachi pia crash no yeah during that actual approach we uh, they were okay wait let i let's i uh, have a quick analysis what happened how important this lesson is of 1 nautical mile is equal to corresponds to 300 feet so this was the pia flight 8303 which crashed over karachi on 22nd may 2020 at 15 nautical mile at 15 nautical mile we, we have already seen 1 nautical mile 300 feet so 15 into 3 is 4500 feet they so instead of uh, 4500 they are at 10000 feet a quick analysis would have raised red flag aircraft would never be able to land a320 
from this kind of approach impossible thereafter atc issued the first warning to them one pilot responded saying that they were satisfied at 10 nautical mile we have already seen 10 into 3 they should be at 3000 feet where are they they are at 7000 feet they are almost double of that no way aircraft could have landed there were a lot of cockpit alerts warning sink rate sink rate too low gear they had not even extended landing gear and they're continuing and they tried to land they touched down on the runway without landing gear they belly landed then they initiated a go round and during go round they scraped their engine on the runway which caused the fuel leak and then they turn around for another approach obviously one engine failed still they and then on the downwind they declared mayday mayday on the final second engine also failed but the red flag was much earlier the simple understanding is that even you have computers on board you have autopilot on board but as a good pilot it is a good habit to continue updating your position okay 30 nautical mile you should not be more than 9000 feet 10 nautical miles should be 3000 feet 2 nautical miles 600 feet but it was ignored how important and if you see the experience of the pilot captain 18000 hours it was no less Whichever way any SOP can be violated, this was violated. Yes, you can sit and discuss after the crash and uh, you can blame. But here, it was all the while there are so many warnings, caution, what they chose to ignore everything. It's indicative of some attitude. Somebody is warning you, still they don't listen. Eventually what happened, one day destiny catches on. Which day it is, that only God knows. So what is the best thing? Whether 18,000 hours or 80,000 hours, always follow the SAP. You have a glide slope, you have ILS. I have autopilot doing everything for me. Computer is doing descent for me. But in your mind, it's a good habit to continue calculating. Now, the angle is given in theta also and it can be given in gradient. It can be given on gradient. Gradient is a generic term which is used for any flyover also or any slope also. Gradient is steep, gradient is smaller. So, if I have two slopes, A and B, horizontal distance is in both these cases is same. What about vertical? component vertical component is lesser in b so out of this a and b which has got more gradient a has got more gradient so gradient is given by vertical component horizontal component and it is always expressed in percentage Gradient 10% means this vertical component is 10% of horizontal component. Gradient 40% means this vertical component or vertical distance is 40% of horizontal distance mode. So, you already seen when you are um, landing on 3 degree, you calculate the 10 nautical mile height of the aircraft is 3040 feet. Using the same parameter, please calculate what is the gradient if this distance is horizontal distance is 10 nautical mile and vertical distance is 3040 feet what will be the gradient remember unit has to be same do it let's see how much it comes copy this so we land on 3 degree glide slope if i want to find what gradient it is Vertical component is 3040 feet, horizontal component is 10 nautical mile. I told so 
10 nautical mile into 6080 feet. So this right away comes to 2 into 100. So it comes to 5%. When you are landing at 3 degree glide slope, it corresponds to 5% of descent gradient. So gradient is different, degrees are different. We don't work on radians, but you can convert it into radians also. So another lesson which comes from this exercise is that, so the lesson comes from this exercise is that 3 degree glide slope corresponds to 5% of descent gradient. Means the vertical component, if it is a height, it will be 5% of horizontal component. If it is a velocity, whether it is in feet per minute or it is in uh, knots, this vertical component will be 5% of horizontal component. So, yesterday we calculated ground speed if theta was given, theta is equal to s bar into 60, for which there is a formula also ground speed into theta into 100 divided by 60. That is if it is given in degrees. Let us say it is given in gradient or even if it is not given, the 3 degree corresponds to 5 percent of descent gradient. So in this case, let us say I am coming to land and gradient is always 5 percent. So let us do another exercise is that descent gradient is 5 percent and your ground speed is 100 knots what will be the rate of descent in feet per minute but now it is given in gradient that is vertical component to horizontal component into 100 expressed in percentage. So let us do it for 100 knots, 120 knots, 150 knots, a real good learning value for lifetime from this exercise. So follow the procedure, 200 knots and let us see make it a Cessna coming at 80 knots. What will be the rate of descent in feet per minute? A very so it is actually speaking your climb, descent, all problems sorted out for your life. Things become so simple. Please so gradient is vertical component to horizontal component into 100 and you this is vertical this is horizontal so vertical is basically you want to find gradient is 5 into horizontal is 100 knots which is nautical mile per hour divided by 100 but you want in feet per minute so feet per minute is 6080 divided by so this is feet per minute. So when I solve this 100, 100 is gone. So this comes to 507 feet per minute. That is what we calculated with theta is equal to s by r into 60 also. Let us see the next one is again vertical to horizontal. So this vertical rate of descent will be 5 into 120 knots divided by 100 answer will be in nautical mile so multiply by 60 feet per minute and this answer comes to 608 feet per minute so if your ground speed is 150 knots 5 into 150 knots divided by 100 answer will be in into 6080 feet per minute so answer comes to 760 feet per minute. Same thing here also 5 into 200 knots divided by 100 to convert into feet per minute 6080 divided by 60 answer comes to 1013 feet per minute and 80 knots if I want to find what will be rate of descent at 80 knots V will be 5% descent gradient into 80 knots divided by 100 nautical mile per hour. So into 6080 divided by 60 is feet per minute. So this comes to 40.
फाइव फीट पर मिनट सो दिस फाइव जीरो सेवन रफली आई कैन टेक इट हाउ मच फाइव हंड्रेड फीट पर मिनट दिस आई कैन टेक इट रफली एट वन ट्वेंटी नॉट सिक्स हंड्रेड फीट पर मिनट दिस आई कैन टेक इट रफली एट सेवन फिफ्टी फीट पर मिनट If your ground speed is 200 knots, I can take it roughly 1,000 feet per minute. And if your ground speed is 80, I can take it roughly as 400 feet per minute. So anybody can find any interesting pattern emerging out of it. It is very simple. What is your ground speed multiplied by five? The pattern is very simple. At 100 knots it is 500 feet per minute at 120 knots it is 600 feet per minute at 150 knots it is 750 feet per minute at 200 knots it is 1000 feet per minute and at 80 knots it is 400 whatever is your ground speed multiply by 5 what is 5 now another interesting thing from this whenever you are calculating your rate of descent With the gradient method, that's what you will do. So this six zero eight zero divided by sixty is what approximately hundred. This will get cancelled. Similarly here, six zero eight zero when you are converting into knots, this will get cancelled when you are following the gradient. If you are doing gradient, so this is also cancelled. Hundred, hundred, because six zero eight zero. This is hundred. Hundred. This get cancelled. Now what you are left with? Your ground speed into five. So there is another lesson which comes out of it. That is for again for your lifetime is your rate of descent doesn't matter. This is five percent. It could be anything. So rate of descent is equal to whatever is your gradient multiply by ground speed this is very very important lesson for your life you don't need any calculator or anything as a pilot when you are descending or you are making an approach every 1 nautical mile from touchdown height 300 feet your rate of descent should be whatever is your ground speed multiply by 5 It is always five when you are landing on three degree glide slope. Wonderful tip. Even when you are flying, you can always cross check whatever is your ground speed multiply by five. That is your rate of descent. Approximately, you know why it is approximately, but it's still very accurate. You are descending with ten percent gradient, so ten into ground speed will be your rate of descent. Because every time when you are using the gradient, this hundred and hundred would get cancelled. So for three degree glide slope, it is always which is corresponding to Five percent. Your rate of descent in feet per minute for for three degree glide slope, which corresponds to five percent of descent gradient. Rate of descent is five into ground speed. Otherwise, whatever is your gradient, multiply by your ground speed. but don't just be parrot so this is a wonderful radian theory to solve all your descent climb problems whether it is in degrees or it is in gradient i hope you enjoyed this class see you after the break till then stay tuned this is your captain speaking